Our next speaker is a 13-time best-selling author, a highly paid speaker, and a seasoned media mogul from Texas. She started her career in media as news anchor and now owns and operates two independent TV stations in Houston and Dallas. As a professional, this speaker is a seasoned expert in media, marketing, public relations, advertising, and branding. Currently, she is also the CEO of Elite Online Publishing that helps individuals become highly paid experts by helping them build their credibility, expertise, and attract more media attention. Virtualpreneurs to share to us how to pivot our businesses in a time like COVID-19. We're excited to have as our next speaker, multi-best-selling author, Melanie Johnson. Hello, Melanie. Hi, Ruben. Thanks so much for having me today. Thank you very much for sparing us your precious time. And You're thank- too. <laughs> <laughs> now, can you tell us more about what you do right now? So what I do right now, I'm uh, one of the co-owners of Elite Online Publishing along with Jen Foster, and we specialize in making authors number one bestsellers and making them business influencers, how to use their book to um, market it, market and get media attention and gain credibility in the marketplace. Getting published is very difficult, more or less it requires passion, right? What, what's your motivation in helping them build their brands and credibility? Oh gosh, I just feel like a book is the best leverage you're going to get in the marketplace. It lasts forever. You're going to create a a bunch of content that you can repurpose over and over again. You can create products, digital programs from it. It just offshoots in so many different ways, especially with the marketplace today. Um, If you're sitting on your hands and you don't know what you should create, if you have a book, you can create so many products from that book. Now, with COVID nineteen pandemic happening around your area, what 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 is it? What does it feel like in your area? Oh man, you know, I think in all areas actually too, you've got the people that are not working at all and don't know what to do with themselves, and they're going crazy with nothing to do. And then you have people that are their business is going exponential they are going crazy because they're even busier than they were before. Mm -hmm. So you've got two, and then you've got the stress where people are running out of income. They are not having money for food and don't know what to do. So overall, everybody is pretty stir crazy and um, just wondering what's going to come next. How about your team? How, how is it? uh, How they, how are you coping with with this uh, pandemic? So our team is doing really well. So um, we're really fortunate that um, we've been an online business from the inception in 2015. So like to do a Zoom meeting, we do those all the time where other people are like, oh my gosh, I have no idea how to use Zoom. So we've been an online and innovative business in the publishing and marketing field for five years now. So all of this comes second nature to us. And we were saying to ourselves, we're so grateful. We feel like we're ahead of the curve when it comes to this. So um, we've been helping other people with doing that and our clients helping them transition to online, um, whether it's having backgrounds. Like my background here today is my virtual office. So I work out of my house and um, I've been working out of my house for five years. So it's kind of the same for me, which I'm fortunate. That's good to know. Now, uh, in your own opinion, as an expert and a published author, um, How is COVID-19 changing the way we're doing business right now? I think it's changing a lot. So, um, and I think what you're going to see is a lot of the markets continuing to use online even after this is over. So uh, Zoom, who almost crashed because so many people were using it, they weren't ready for it. I think you're going to see this become a natural part of people's business life in the future where they weren't using it, now they are. So a lot of times businesses um, resisted innovation but now they're forced to embrace the innovation. So I think the whole business as a pool, pool, as a, as a whole, when we come out of this, you're going to see a whole new push of innovation that's happening because of this. Mm -hmm. Now we, we are seeing a lot of uh, local brick and mortar businesses out there who are really caught by surprise. And now they're trying just to survive and strive in your own opinion. How should how should they, what should be their action plans for them to be able to survive this uh, pandemic or the impacts of this pandemic? Yeah, Um, good question. So you got to think about 
how else can I, how else can you make income and how can you reduce your expenses? So whether it's uh, asking the landlord to not have to pay rent for a while, what can you cut? What subscriptions do you have? What other things that you have that you can cut out that maybe you didn't really use? So a lot of small business owners have a hard time with this because in business, you should be doing this anyways. And now it's forcing you to say, okay, I don't need to be spending this. Reevaluate what your expenses are, number one. So take a look, a harder look at what your regular operating expenses are, how Q can make those different and, and cut those and make them less and be more lean. The mm -hmm. other thing is, what products and services do you have that you can reinvent or repackage to sell them online or have them delivered? So what's another way that you can sell your products and services? So we've even done that. We've taken out and said, oh, maybe we should do a book writing retreat again online. We used to do those in person. So let's do a book writing retreat online for some of our clients. So it's just taking that and looking at, all right, let's look at all of the things that we sell, all of the services that we have, how can we repackage them or and redistribute them in a different way than we were before? So that's my advice. So with, with your publishing company, I, I assume that you have your retreats before offline, but you mentioned earlier, you're also digitally doing it. Right. We're offering one coming up in June. Um, so it'll be a three day book writing retreat that we're having. It's called the book writing camp. So if you'd like to check it out, the book writing camp.com. So um, we promise that you'll get your book all drafted and ready to go and all outlined in that time. As there are also a lot of uh, brick and mortar business owners who are really stuck in their homes doing nothing. So mm -hmm. what do you think should be the things that they'll be doing to be more productive? So um, I love this. So one of our clients, he was on a Zoom call with friends and they were all saying, well, what are you doing during this time? What's, oh, I'm you know doing a landscape project. Oh, I'm doing cleaning out some rooms. And he says, well, I'm working on a book. What? You're writing a book? <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so now is the time that you're doing this. If you have that downtime, it's a perfect time to write a book. So write a book about your business. And I'm going to give you a tip here because a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, a book sounds daunting. So I'm going to give you our formula to do this. One of our formulas and strategies that we'll be teaching on the book writing camp. So it's the 10 by 10 by three. So if you take a few minutes, put your stopwatch at 15 minutes and think of the most frequently asked questions you get about your business all the time or your service or your products. So like a doctor gets the same questions over and over again. Um, even if you own a kolache shop, you're probably getting the same types of questions over and over again. So what are those frequently asked questions that you get in your business every day, day in, day out? And then think of the should ask questions. Like if they knew what you knew, this is what they should be asking. So think of the ones with your expertise that makes it different and write those questions down. Then the three, the 10 by 10 by three, as we say, 10 frequently asked, 10 should ask. And then the three is to come up with three stories for each of those questions that illustrate it. So it can be a transformational story. It may be a story about you that you have with you working with a client, but it may be a story of someone else that you heard of or a story you read in a book that illustrates the answers to those questions. When you do that, you'll have a whole framework for a book right there. Wow. Yeah, you're giving me an idea on how to do mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but the thing is, it, it takes an expert to become a best-selling author for that matter, right? Mm -hmm. And you've created more than a dozen of uh, best-selling authors under your publishing firm. How did you Actually, do that? Actually, over 100. We've done almost oh, 150 okay. authors that we've launched other people's books that we've made them number one bestsellers. Wow, more than 100. How do you do that? How, what's, your, what's your secret? <laughs> <laughs> Weigh all my secrets, Ruben. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Part of it is, like I said, having a great cover, a great title, a great mm -hmm. subtitle. We work with our clients to make sure they have a beautiful cover. We've even redone some books that were out there. Like we have before and after books that really were not very pretty and good. And we've redone them and made them a bestseller. So um, part of it's our proprietary software and our research that we do to make sure you're in the right categories, that you have the right keywords. Um, and we run a big promotional campaign to propel your book to, to that. And we're really proud to say that every single author that's worked with us, we've made them a number one bestseller. 
Yeah. For those who are who wants to become best selling author, feel free to check on the video below. We will provide you all of the links on how to reach Melanie and the elite online publishing team. Melanie, one thing that really uh, one thing that uh, I often hear right now is how businesses should pivot, right? Yeah. Uh, how do you think should local brick and mortar businesses pivot? Yeah, and it's tough for the brick and mortar businesses more than the online businesses. Mm -hmm. So um, I think they have to double down on their online presence. They have to double down on their communication. It's all about the communication right now. So the more you can communicate and on more platforms, that being said, you want to know what platforms your customers are on. Mm -hmm. Are they on Facebook? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Instagram? So wherever your customers are, double down on that platform. And honestly, right now, Facebook ads are the way to go because mm -hmm. so many people, you're getting like, almost double the amount of eyeballs that you were before on Facebook ads because so many people are on that platform. So um, communication is key. Let them know what you're doing. What are you doing with your business? How are you transitioning? If you're a restaurant business, you want to tell them, hey, we're doing safe practices here. We now have carry out um, in Texas. They're allowing alcohol to go. What are the specials you're offering during this time? So communicate in as many ways as you can possible. Um, I'd uh, recommend investing in a bot. So if you have a bot through Messenger that you can communicate with them. So you're not able to do your traditional advertising and drive by and have your clients in that way. So think about other ways. Um, if you're a restaurant, share recipes. Do a video where you're cooking in your house one of the recipes that you do at your restaurant. Um, people would love that if they're used to seeing the owner of the restaurant coming and by visiting of the tables. That would be a great way. So just think of ways that you can communicate with your clientele. And it's also really important that you communicate with your staff. So they know what's going on and what direction that you're heading in and you're reassuring them. So um, communication for brick and mortar businesses and pivoting to pushing more online is key for your survival. Thank you very much, Melanie, for that insights. Any closing message to all the local and small businesses uh, owners out there listening to us right now? So I know it seems really tough right now. But in the Bible, it always says, this too shall pass. So just remember, embrace what you're doing now. Take the time to be innovative. Take the time to work on your business in different ways that you never would have done if you were operating uh, normally. And then when you come out, set yourself up to succeed. So when this comes out, you are ready to hit the ground running, that you have a book that you've written, whether it's a book on your expertise, it's a book on your restaurant recipes, um, have a book coming out, have your online presence really rock starred and look at your brand. So um, just come out and work on yourself and your business during this time. So when the doors open and everything's ready to go, you're 10 times better than you were before this happened. I hope the priceless tips we've learned today from Melanie can really help us to move forward through these hard times. Melanie, thank you very much. And looking Thanks, forward Ruben. to more conversations with you. Sure. And you can reach us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. Reach out to us anytime. Virtual entrepreneurs, live the great life.